Everyone, this is Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop, and I'm going to be tying another, uh, you know, Mackenzie Caddis or Caddis variation of a wet fly. This one has a hidden bead. Um, it's a pretty common style. I'll show it to you here. It's behind the hackle and the and the deer hair. Um, it's a pretty common style of wet fly, especially when you need a little bit more weight. But this one does really good uh, higher in the water column with this deer hair wing to help suspend it. There is a bead. You can omit the bead if you don't need the extra weight. There's a little bit of flash on the back, which I've found in the past really helps, especially if you're searching through kind of quicker water. Um, you got to catch that fish's attention when it's in the zone. So, so going over some of the components of the fly, we just have a dubbed body with a blend of stuff, um, blend of various dubbings to get close to that, you know, very odd color of the Mackenzie caddis, very unique. We have a little hot spot in the back made with flashaboo, a bead, deer hair and partridge. Pretty simple, um, pretty quick fly once you do it a couple times and get it down. Here's a 360 and then we'll hop right into it. So again, um, same as the other wet fly, this has um, the A-Rex 562 size 8, the FW562 size 8 new hook from A-Rex. It's a short shank nymph hook. Um, it's very stout. Um, it's a pretty sweet hook. I've been using it lately. I'm really happy with tying on it and fishing it, which is ideally what you want. You want it to perform in both aspects. So we'll get started here. I have a 1 8 countersunk tungsten bead um, here, and you're kind of going to tie it in in an odd spot to do this hidden bead, you know, wet fly thing, you know, for soft tackles. There is, um, you know, and like I said, depending on your needs, you certainly can omit this bead. You can put a glass bead. You can do no bead. I'm just showing you guys a technique of how to hide the bead if that's something you want to do. So depending on if you want to add the wing, I would leave more space in front if you don't need it. Um, you can crowd it a little more if you're just doing the partridge. Since we're doing both, I want to leave a little space, but I don't want to leave so much that I have a big, you know, head that I've built up that I have to fill in, you know, with just thread. So for me, that's about enough space. If you're just learning this technique or fly, you might need a little bit more. Um, within a couple of tries, you know, you can get pretty good about not needing a lot of space, but it is a little, a little weird at first trying to squeeze all that in. So again, here we're using Danville 70 denier black thread. Um, and for the wire we're using, we're using uh, you, soft wire, uni soft wire, ne the neon soft wire, and medium olive is the color. Um, it gives a little flash to this to this fly and before I was getting ahead of myself before we tie that on we are going to tie in a little piece of magnum flashaboo here to create that hot spot in the back um, I fished a variation of this fly that was just smaller um, during the granum caddis hatch that's largely done here in Oregon now it very well might be happening other places and if it is you know tie this in a smaller variation for the granum caddis hatch and um, Hopefully you have the same experience as me. I was just crushing fish on the swing. It was really fun. Um, you know, it can be a tricky hatch, so swinging soft tackles for that one often is very productive. Um, and so we're gonna take some wraps here. We'll wrap it very far up. Um, we're just gonna cover the rest with thread, but just to get it kind of caught there and in place. And then we'll take our wraps back to where the body's gonna end, which is about here. Um, and then before we do anything else, I found it's easy to add the UV resin right now. Um, and so we're just going to add a little dot of UV resin, just enough to coat it. So if this thing gets crushed by the fish, they don't, you know, completely tear it up. You just want it to, you know, longevity of the flies we tie is kind of what we're looking for. Something that just won't get torn apart. There's nothing worse than having a fly that works. And after, you know, a couple of fish, it's just useless. So, um... We'll kind of cure the back of that, and now we have our hot spot. It's sealed in UV resin. Uh, it's going nowhere, and that will be, you know, our little attractor spot, you know, to help catch that fish's attention um, in high water. It's, it can be very, very helpful to have something like that. I added it to a pattern I'd already kind of, personal pattern I'd kind of had for the Granum Caddis Hatch, and it made a really big difference, so I'm a, I'm a believer in it. And so we'll tie in this uni soft wire, the medium uni soft wire, and the color is neon olive. And we'll kind of tie it in back here towards the back, and then um, our dubbing blend is going to look something like this. This is pretty close to the Mackenzie caddis's color, that big green caddis, kind of that 
crazy turquoise blue color of the body. Um, I used a blend of dubbing to create this, the hairline dubbing Mackenzie Green Caddis. Um, it's a little bright, so we dull it down with just some, some gray dubbing, you know, so hair's ear plus, um, and natural hairs, dark hair's ear will help, you know, dull it down a little bit, and a little, you know, Ice WV Peacock helps add a little bit of flash. Um, you know, you can do it with just the green if you'd like, but, you know, for video purposes, and for my use, at least, um, I think getting closer to what the bug looks like helps, so, making a blend of dubbing, um, you know, I don't think it hurts. And it's, a, I think, a good skill to have to be able to work with what you got and kind of get a little closer to what those bugs look like. So we'll create a little dubbing noodle here and start towards the back and kind of wrap our way up. Um, we're going to create a slight taper here. I didn't make a taper with the thread, so we'll make it with the, um, with the dubbing here and kind of work our way up, kind of adding as we go, you know, tight wraps. And the cool thing about mixing these these dubbings is as you go, you know, you'll see bits of gray and then bits of 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 that green, and it kind of makes it look segmented, which is kind of cool um, for the body a little bit. So kind of continue to work our way up here until we get to the bead. And, you know, this is also a pretty quick one. Um, you know, it's sometimes nice to be able to tie something really quick and crank out a bunch of them before you get to the river. Um, and not have to dedicate a whole lot of time, you know. And the soft tackles are super productive, so it's really, if you haven't tried it, it's a really great way to, um, kind of different way to catch fish. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to add a little bit, create a very thin dubbing noodle to go back over it and just build just a very slight taper because I didn't make it big enough on the way up here, but we'll kind of take some wraps back here. In there so now we have a little taper and we're gonna I like I've been flipping my hook over to do these wraps lately um, I can kind of look closer see what I'm doing on the opposite side too and that way I just not bashing the hook point it's kind of saved my fingers a little bit and so now we're gonna tie off on our wire here and then snip it or helicopter it whichever way you do it. If you're going to snip it, I recommend using your old scissors for it because you'll trash your new ones. Um, I will add a little bit of extra dubbing here to hide this thread. And then we'll move our thread up to the front here. So now we're at the point where we're going to be doing our, um, adding our soft tackle. And so now, first we have to add a piece of partridge. Um, I use one of these big partridge skins, this Hungarian partridge. Um, this I would grab in the middle of the neck here. Um, you don't want it too long, you don't want to grab from the back. Um, you want the fibers to kind of be the length of the body, is how I measure it. So you can measure it a little bit, but it's one of those things that I don't know if there's an actual rule. I just, you know, get a feel for what size I like. So we'll tie that in, and I like to wrap back up to the front so I can get it really close to the bead. Um, for me, I think the, with this too, this really helps in case it comes off. I like to just do like one or two whip finishes just to secure my thread in the zone of where I want it. And um, so we will kind of take this wrap up. You know, I'm, I actually want to wrap it back on it. But what I was saying was I think the bead does help a little bit. Um, kind of control and splay out the the partridge fibers, which is kind of cool. Um, they can, soft tackles can be a little weird to learn how to tie at first. Um, not a ton of people fish them anymore, so I don't know why they still work. They're a super old type of fly, but they do work. So take a couple of wraps. We don't need a ton in here, um, you know, because all these fibers go into the front. We're going to, um, you know, just kind of guide them where we need them. So don't worry if it looks messy. It's really easy to clean up. And so I would say like a wrap and a half around, just enough to get fibers on all sides is what you're looking for. And then so once you're kind of secured here, we're gonna clip off the stem and any extra fibers. And then see, we're kind of gonna pull it back and you can see there might be some spots that are a little sparse and I'll just kind of guide the feathers back where they need to go. 
and you know if there's extras and you have too much you can clip off any excess um, you know that looks pretty good to me you know it's not overdressed you don't want to completely hide the body or anything and so the last thing we're going to do is a small wing of deer hair this is all-purpose deer natural white tail from nature spirit super good stuff um, put it in a hair packer little ones I think help with this or just put a small amount of hair I'll kind of show you how much I grabbed before I started tying you know it's a very small amount it'll splay out you know you, you don't have space to put a big clump of deer, deer hair on this fly and so we're kind of gonna measure where we want it I like right there um, you know going over the bead certainly but not you know all the way back over the whole fly and so we'll kind of take some wraps to the front make sure the wraps are overlapping and wide enough so that the hair won't pop out um, you'll learn that the hard way if you don't from me and we'll kind of snip off the excess any stragglers and kind of build a little head right here if we have any stray hairs we can kind of redirect them or remove them and then here if our head's looking good, which I think it is, and our hair isn't where we want it, we can tie it off, coat it with UV resin to help keep it together, and then we're all done. So, you know, great fly. You can adjust it. I like this one for higher in the water column. Um, you can omit the bead, certainly, and swing it right under the surface. Works really good. If you're in quicker water, just to get it down before it swings back up, the bead is helpful. You can go beadless and pair it with a heavy one, um, really whatever you want. But here's just a general blueprint of a fly that has worked really great for me in the granum caddis hatch. So we'll cure this. Um, you know, this is the hidden bead, Mackenzie green caddis wet fly. Um, tie it up, let us know what you think. Um, all the materials can be found at caddisflyshop.com. Thanks.